You're tuned in to the Benefit Broadcast, the Conceal or Reveal edition. I'm Ryan Lange, cultural producer and man behind Hangama, East London's Queer Bollywood Hip Hop Night. Also, reluctant icon and TV personality. I am joined with the incredible Charlie Craggs. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Charlie and I am a TV presenter, I am an author. Um, I'm probably best known for my campaign, Nail Transphobia though, which is, um, I run a pop-up nail salon where I travel around the country, offering the public free manicures for the chance to have a chat with a trans person. Um, but today our episode is a celebration of the LGBTQIA plus community and talking about coming out, Ryan, and it, it coming out in a society that wants to put us into boxes. Um, so let's get into it. I have something to say. Oh God, what? I'm gay. I can do you one better. I'm trans. <laughs> <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me though, what was your coming out story, right? Um, my coming out experience. It was interesting because like, I feel that when I was younger, I mean, I look really young, but actually I'm from the era of VHS. I found it really difficult to figure out like how to understand and wrap my, my head around the words gay and trans and bisexual. I mean, back in the day, it was just LGBT. It was just gay, it was just gay. Yeah. And gay oh encompass God, lesbian, it encompass <laughs> drag queen, it encompass trans people even. There was like just, it was just one word. Okay. Yeah, I, and I think over time things expand. And I think that we, we learn and as we raise visibility, we, we figure out who we are. But I mean, going back to where I was when I was a kid, I was subscribing to things like playing with a PlayStation and um, hanging out with all my like male presenting cousins. And um, I just wanted to hang out upstairs and make roti with my aunties. And my mom was like, you have to go downstairs. We don't want everyone to think that you're gay. Um, so I remember being a kid and I like went to a, a library and like I like crawled so no one could see me to like the gay bisexual section okay. and just like pulled books down and like secretly read them in other books just to figure out like what it meant and then we had dial up and the internet taught me a lot of things talk about one moment of queer joy that you've had since then big or small I I've had a lot of queer joy and I'm so blessed to say that because um with the obstacles and the things that I've overcome I've been able to celebrate and have moments of elation and I'm um, I think now, at the tender, youthful age that I am, um, looking back at some of the, the people that I've got to work with and the people that I've got to unlock culturally, creatively, um, have really, really inspired me. And it's made me, made me happy that like, I can kind of get a sense of knowing what my legacy is going to be. Like Your legacy as queer people, like, we don't get to have kids a tra a traditionally or traditionally in ways that we would normally think that um, most people get to experience it I, the opportunity of having a child as a cis male is like as a queer person is is not a, a straight path yeah. um, pun intended but it's like <laughs> I I get to experience that with all the people that come to Hangama and all the people that like get to enjoy the music and and dip into their their gender presentation dip into their gender orientation and knowing that it was incepted at my night or incepted through an interaction with me like fills me with complete and utter joy I'm so glad that a little bit of me can live inside everyone my kind of moment of queer joy is a much smaller moment and it's like a moment in the everyday which I think we need as kind of marginalized people like when life can be hard mm -hmm. to like get us through <laughs> through the every day and mine is like the other day I was on the tube and I was like oh my god I am so comfortable and I remember the first time I ever got on the tube um when I had started presenting when mm -hmm. I started like living my life authentically as Charlie and I have never been more terrified than that first day going out presenting as my authentic self um, I just remember like leaving my like door and like I said I lived on a council estate so like there was like thousands of windows looking down at my door and just feeling like everyone was at their windows looking at me everyone was laughing early transition is hard yeah. hard 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 like no word for how hard it is I can't believe the difference in like that person getting on the train the tube that day to the person I am now sitting on the tube like I said like no makeup on like I'm at a point in my transition I don't even have to wear makeup to blend in like that is so powerful and don't get me wrong I love makeup mm -hmm. I wear I love makeup makeup is one of my favorite things in the world but it's so nice not to have to wear makeup to be like seen as as who you are you know it's not a mask anymore it just like it makes me the better version of myself all right guys it's time to check on social media and see what you've been saying I got a text. <laughs> Okie dokie. So the first message is, any advice on meeting other queer people? 
I genuinely think the best thing you can do if you want to meet more queer people is get involved. Um, the best thing to do is to read about all the queer daytime activities that exist, not just nighttime, because nighttime can be quite dark and you're just like on the perimeter of a dance floor. Um, explore the city, get lost and get curious. Um, meet as many people as you can. Start with, hi, my name is, and I'm from, and I'd like to, and just fill in the gaps and just be kind. I think we're changing the world in a, a nice way. Like people are more um, kind and welcoming and patient after the pandemic. So I think it's nice to ask queer people that we all remember, whether you're the one asking the questions and exploring or the ones being asked a question, to give that person space and try to help pull the people up. I have a question for you. Go on. This is not me. This is a question from the audience. I feel like I'm straight, but I keep fancying trans people. Can you give me any advice? Are you sure it's not you, Ryan? Do you fancy me, Ryan? Okay, I love you, Charlie. <laughs> Um, okay, do you know what? I feel like this gets so over-intellectualized and it's so, it's like so deep and it's really not that deep, okay? I am a girl, mm. okay? Yes. Liking me doesn't make you anything other than straight, sadly. Ma it makes me nothing other than straight as well, which I think is proof that if, if you know there's this whole like misconception that be if being gay is a choice. Yeah. Maybe if being gay was a choice, I would choose to be gay. Let me just, let me make that crystal clear. I would not choose this, <laughs> this prison <laughs> that is heterosexuality for myself, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I share a lot of my dating life on Instagram. We've yeah. seen the skid mark video. <gasps> and, um, what? It, yeah, we do. <laughs> It oh is my god, yes. a prison. Oh my god, yes, I know. Uh, yes, oh yes. Oh my god, yes. Stop. I would not choose that for myself. If 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 I could have if if gay men like trans women, if it made you gay to like trans women, trust me, I would pick a gay guy. You smell nice. You you look nice. Mm -hmm. You know how to dress nice. You know you're more sensitive generally. Not all the time, but you know. Right. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like I'm. I, I would choose a gay guy. Yeah. I, it, sadly, gay guys don't like me. You know, sadly they don't like my boobs. They don't like my hips. They don't like my long hair. They don't like my beauty. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sadly, yeah. So sadly. It doesn't make you anything other than straight. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or maybe that's what you wanted to hear. But yeah, um, liking trans women doesn't make you anything, anything special. Tell me one thing that, big or small, that you felt like you had to conceal about yourself and how did it impact you? One thing, <laughs> I concealed <laughs> Everything. I okay. I kid you not. Like it's actually quite sad. I really internalized a lot of. I got bullied. I started getting bullied very young. I'm like sorry. I was like seven when I started getting called like homophobic names mm. and girl and stuff. And um, I really, I started it, like hating myself, mm. which is kind of natural, I guess. When the whole world, it feels like the whole world hates you. Everyone around you hates you. Um, I started hating all the things about me that made me feminine, which were the reason I was getting bullied. Like I looked at my brothers who had such an easy life compared to me who were like just like super like masculine boys and then I was me and I was just like my life was so hard compared to them and I like really resented that and I really hated myself and I started like stripping away all the parts of me that made me feminine so I stopped listening to music I liked I stopped dressing the way I liked I stopped hanging around with people I liked and I got to a point where I was just miserable because I wasn't I'd stripped away all the parts that were feminine but in turn I stripped away all the parts that made me me and mm. made me who I am so like I was nothing I was living, I was living a life for the people that hated me, like make it make sense. Like, why am I living my life to make people who hate me happy? Mm. And I hope anyone listening who's like kind of in that space now where they're minimizing and concealing themselves to make someone else happy who doesn't even like them. Like yeah. those people are trying to hurt you and you're like letting them steal your joy. So like, it, it, like now I'm like, I live my fullest, most authentic self. I remember when I was in university, I, um, I, I found out that my parents found out that I was gay um, and my sister called me and she's like mom mom knows that you're gay mom knows that you're gay and I had to go to school that day and like finish an exam and I couldn't do it I like bombed it and um, I, I was just sitting there just like tapping my fingers being like how am I going to exist in the rest of this life let alone this exam mm. when the exam finished I went straight to my professor and I said professor like I'm so so sorry um, I, I just I bombed my test because my parents found out I'm gay and he just said don't worry I'll make sure you pass. And I just looked at him like aghast being like, why? Why would you do that to me? Why would you give me that grace? And he said, it's because I have a daughter who used to be my son. Oh. And I just stood there, didn't know what to say. And he's like, being gay is going to be the reason why you're great. So just get back to it. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Oh but like God. that ability to have someone see that you're concealing yourself and see the pain that you go through when you go through it, the exhaustion and like someone who can notice the rock bottom that you've hit because it's so dark down there. When yeah. someone throws a rope down there and pulls you out, it's incredibly powerful.
I think it's really important that as like two people who are um, transitioning two generations, like the generation that like were struggling and um, internalized, had so much internalized homophobia yeah. and were trying to survive the AIDS epidemic to the generation now who are like completely aware of everything. And, and as soon as you meet someone, they're telling you what their pronouns are. It's like yeah. to, in order to talk about the journey that we had to go through, the lack of resources, the lack of support um, and the moments, that, that these shining moments of support from people we never thought that helped us get a lifeline to see another day. How has the response been from nail transphobia? Do you know what? I've been thinking this recently because I had the eighth birthday since I set the campaign up and I got a bit disheartened because um, we've been seeing in recent years, especially like the pushback against trans rights, mm. especially in the media and like conversations that we're having now that I'm just like, how are we having this? Like now in 2022, it's like the, like the stuff yesterday about the EHRC where they're talking about putting um, uh, trans women who haven't got gender recognition certificates okay. into men's bathroom. You can't come into a women's bathroom unless you have a certificate. I've been doing this for eight years. There's been people who have been doing it for eight decades, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, are we still at the point where we're conflating trans women with rapists, you know? Well, that really resonates with me. It really resonates with me because only recently did India decriminalize homosexuality. I saw that, yeah. And so like, it's shocking to think that only three years ago that being queer was the equivalent of uh, bestiality. Yeah, and or, like, or pedophi be a yeah. pedophilia. And we as South Asian humans are like the most sexually fluid people in the world. Like we, we weren't straight. Yeah. We weren't heteronormative. We were gay AF until we were colonized. Yeah. All right. So we need to wrap things up. Yeah. I just want everyone out there to know that if you feel like the whole world is against you and there are a lot of things that you hate about yourself, I want you to write all those things down. I want you to wear those with a badge of pride because it's those things that are going to make you unstoppable. And so if you ever think that this is impossible, just think I am possible. I think my takeaway would be for the allies watching or people who um, want to be an ally or just pe people who maybe who don't even want to be an ally is to say something if you see something. We all need to be better allies to everyone. We just need to be, we need to be there for each other. And I just, yeah, I just would really urge you to say something if you see something. I think we've covered quite a lot today, haven't we, Ryan? Yeah, we've concealed, revealed, revelations, no hesitations. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Benefit Broadcast, the Conceal or Reveal edition. Be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Bye. Bye-bye.